Hi everyone, I wanted to shoot a quick refresher on how to render an ambient occlusion inside of 3ds Max 2019. Uh, ever since 3ds Max uh, about 2017 and 2018, they got rid of the ability to shoot a uh, kind of a quick ambient occlusion using mental ray. But there is still a method that you can use. It's a little bit of an old school method that we used to do kind of back in the day, but it's still pretty applicable to today. Uh, now, granted, there are other softwares out there that you can, you know, quickly get some ambient occlusion if you have access to things like Substance and Marmoset, uh, as well as multiple other ones. But if you wanted to keep it here inside of 3ds Max and create a, a simple AO, I'm going to show you how to do that. So the first thing that I will always do is make sure that you save your file, back it up, make a separate copy of it, get, you know, give it another name or something along those lines, kind of basic, uh, you know, safety measure in case you screw something up and uh, you want to, you know, pick up where you left off. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a material and I'm going to make it completely white in the diffuse all the way down to pure white. I'm going to assign that material to my object and you should see it obviously here inside the viewport and what we'll do after this is we'll start getting everything set up for the actual render. What I want to do is I want to create a light and you should see this under next to your primitives and your shapes. Uh, you should see lights. Now, by default, you may not see the skylight that we're going to use. You might you might be inside of photometric. So switch that back to standard, and we're going to create a skylight. Now, by default, when you drag out a skylight, uh, it will typically have a color that is slightly blue. Uh, since I've been doing some tests, it's probably off uh, right now for me. But you may notice that it's got a little bit of a hint of blue to it. Uh, in order to get rid of this, we, we don't want this in our actual ambient occlusion. We want to make sure that it's, you know, pure white. Go ahead and drag out the sliders and make sure that you're at 255, 255, 255. So that you have a pure white skylight. Now, what we're going to do is these parameters over here on the right that you see, they're, they're parameters that you can slightly adjust to make sure that you get the best results when you render out your ambient occlusion. Uh, the, the main one, obviously, is we want to make sure that cast shadows is turned on. The rays per sample will slightly increase the quality of the render, but it will also increase the time. My suggestion is always to start off with a low setting, make sure stuff is looking good, make sure everything's good to go, uh, and then go to a higher setting once you're happy with the result. And the same thing with your render detector is you want to render a small, a small image as opposed to a giant one to start off with. or You're going to be wasting a lot of time. Uh, make sure that the sky color is white and that the rays per sample, you know, set it to something like 10 or something to start with uh, really low. The ray bias, I don't usually play with that very often, uh, but make sure that your settings look pretty much the same uh, as kind of what you see over here on the on my screen. Whoops, I accidentally drug another one out, uh, but that's fine. There we go. Uh, so, you know, like I said, take a look over here, make sure everything's looking good. Check those settings. Okay, now that we've got the settings all corrected and we have the, um, you know, the colors applied to our object, what we're going to do is we are going to select our object. We're going to press zero to bring up the render detector dialog. And with the render detector dialog set up, we want to change a couple of things. Number one is you probably want to adjust your padding. I'll typically set my padding to about 20. I want to make sure that this is set to use existing channel. It's very common that sometimes it's set to use automatic unwrap, and this is incorrect. We're going to leave this at use existing channel and make sure that this is set to channel one. Uh, this will be, you know, obviously the channel where your UVs are. What we want to do is we want to add a complete map. We don't want to do a diffuse. If we render out a diffuse right now, it'll be solid white. Uh, even though the uh, preview window is going to look like it's correct, complete map is what we want. That's going to include the, uh, the shadows and the color as well. So go ahead and hit add elements. And what I would typically suggest is always start small with something like a 512. Don't, don't do 1024s or anything like that to start off with. We're going to set our element background. Also, make sure that this is white. You never want to render ambient occlusion on a black background. Uh, if there's ever any pixel bleed over, those black pixels can cause lots of problems for your shader system. So make sure that it's solid white. Press OK. Next, you're going to browse to the location and save the name for your ambient occlusion. And so for me, I'm going to save it in this Canon folder. I'm going to name it Canon Prop Complete Map. Uh, you could name it something like Canon Prop AO or whatever it is that you wanted to call it. Uh, and then go ahead and hit save. Now, if this comes up as a 
uh, a target file if you decide you want to use a target file for this. Uh, just make sure that you have this set up so that it's got uh, 24, you turn off all your alphas, and it should look basically just like this. So go ahead and press OK, and you should be good to go. Uh, element background is white. You are going to you know, verify that like we said. Uh, make sure that shadows is turned on if it's not by, by default. Uh, make sure that you do have selected element unique settings to shadows turned on. Uh, and then lastly, before we do our render, what I would typically also do is make sure that my renderer is set correct. The hotkey for this is F10. And so if you go to the scanline renderer, make sure that you go to the actual uh, renderer tab. And I typically will set mine to Catmul ROM and set this to max 2.5. Hammersley is is very uh, it's, it's a lot better for uh, you know rendering out our normal maps or higher quality maps. Uh, but it does take way longer. And at the end of the day, the ambient occlusion needs to be uh, pretty good. It doesn't need to be perfect. So max 2.5, make sure super samples and global super samplers are on uh, and all of that. You also want to make sure that, you know, your anti-aliasing and filter map and stuff like that. Now, one feature that will actually improve your render time here inside of Max, make sure that you turn on this feature here called Enable SSE. We're going to turn that on, and this is actually going to help to speed up the, the render time uh, for ambient occlusion. So with that turned on, you can go ahead and close, close your render settings. And I think that we're ready to go. Let's go ahead and, and kick off the render. And with the power of editing, it's done. Now, even on my computer, I have a fairly old GPU. That only took about 30 seconds. It's not going to take a super long time uh, for a low amount of shadows and a small sized image. So what we may do is, you know, just make sure that we don't have any odd uh, overlapping areas or strange pixel issues, you know, stuff that you might recognize if you were to look at the ambient occlusion. You also want to remember that when you look at this inside of Photoshop, it's going to look slightly different and that this is just your preview window. So for example, if I hop over here to my uh, actual image inside of Photoshop, you can see the actual, uh, what the rendered ambient occlusion is going to look like. Now I'm going to go ahead and close this and back inside of Max, I'm going to adjust a few settings uh, increase the quality of it and do another render for my final pass. So let's go ahead and close this preview. I'm going to grab the skylight itself. I'm going to set my samples up to something like 20 and then reselect the Canon and set this to a 1024. And this should give me a much higher quality result. Uh, and again, you can play around with the different sizes and whatnot as you go. So I'll go ahead and start this render. And we'll wait for this to finish. And over here inside of Photoshop, we can take a look at the final rendered image. Uh, the quality is still not 100% there. If I really wanted to get a little bit sharper, I could go ahead and use the Hammersley render. Um, I could bump up my samples, but overall, this isn't a, a terrible render. One thing that I would like to do is in order to sort of give it a nice little bit of polish is I'm going to add a levels to the top of it. And I'm going to make sure that I am removing or reducing the amount of blank here on the left in my levels. I want to sort of use the uh, maximum value range of the left and right so that I get a lot deeper darks on the uh, on the darker areas and then the brighter brights on the brighter areas. For those of you that are going to bring this into Substance or Marmoset or you're going to use custom shader systems, you want those deep levels of dark in the ambient occlusion because then it's going to uh, better calculate your crevices and your cracks and whatnot uh, for your shader system. So if you leave them at gray, you might not get as deep of a result as you want. And this is a little more similar to kind of what we had back in the day uh, with ambient occlusion using with Mental Ray. So what I would do is I would save this out as my you know final uh, Targa ambient occlusion and then back over inside of 3ds max we can go ahead and delete out this extra light we won't need that anymore um, and we can add it as a, its own image if we'd like to And there we go. So now that has the ambient occlusion applied uh, to the map. And you can kind of verify its uh, success 
by you know grabbing an element or something if you wanted to kind of move it around and get an idea for it. Uh, right now I am using I do have shady shaded mode on so you could you know turn that back to standard if you want to see what it looks like without any shadows or anything like that. Um, but overall this this looks like it worked out pretty good. So uh, that's the basics of it. Uh, a couple things that you might want to remember is if you are doing this with a low poly model that does not have uh, you know normal maps applied or uh, any sort of smoothing attached to it. If you want some adjustments to the ambient occlusion quality, you will need to make adjustments to the smoothing groups of the low poly. And so one of the things that I mean like that, for example, is we might switch to by angle selection on this inside sort of area and set like a lower value here uh, and separate out the smoothing group here. Uh, give it a, you know, its own smoothing group so that it kind of flattens out a little bit more. And then you might get better crevices when you decide you're going to go to the um, when you go to the other you know render for ambient occlusion. You, you'd have to re-render it, but it's something that you might consider is that if you know some of the crevices and cracks and stuff are not quite popping as much as you'd like, that might be something that could give you a little bit of an advantage by separating out some of those smoothing areas. You know, like also here, what I might do is 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 give this a, a stronger crease here with a ring and then control click on my polygons and then set an auto smooth to that and then that would probably generate a little bit of better uh, ambient occlusion there at the end of the day so that's just something to consider I'm not going to go through that process right now uh, but just bear in mind that your your final quality of your AO is going to be based on the smoothing groups of your of your prop now whether that is the the smoothing groups that you want at the end of the day remember we can we're just saving a, a version of this to work with and then you can still use the image you can still render it out and then when you're done you can just you know go back to your old file that you had with the correct smoothing groups on it so Hopefully that helped you out and that should give you a better idea of how to render an ambient occlusion inside of 3ds Max.